in amongst these beautiful flowers, we found quite a big herd of impala. They were sort of mingled up with another herd of, of zebra. Their patterns and their shapes and their movements are just always quite compelling. There's something about the starkness of the black and white that, that really draws you in. There are one or two red-billed oxpeckers bouncing around the backs of the zebra. A lot less than I'd expected, but clearly not a lot of parasites on these guys. It's a beautiful time of year. Everything damp, everything cool and moving. The zebra eventually slowed down their movements stood still for quite a long time. You could see a few of them catnapping while they were standing. And eventually one or two of them lay down and that's how we left them. find that the lesser flamingos are up and active even before we arrive. They fly on and off the pan right through the night, flying hundreds of kilometers to other feeding wetlands during the day and then back each evening. And why do they do this? I suppose because they can. Their flight paths reflect a vast interwoven web of wetlands and pans spread across the region with flocks migrating back and forth compelled by whatever it is that sustains them in their life cycles. I think what amazes me most is the amount and variety of life that so tenaciously holds into these pockets in the greater environment. These places where that which lives can survive and regenerate. And seeing the vigor and abundance with which it expresses itself, sometimes against all odds. And that is what holds me in such awe. It is broadly understood that the reed beds in any wetland system play an important role in the filtering and purifying of the water. But one must give thought too to the creatures in that environment and birds like flamingo, which in their countless numbers play an even more important role in the purifying of water. Each bird actively pumping so many liters through its system each day, sieving and cleaning that water as it feeds off the algae and small crustaceans. And that is a function in nature which cannot be replaced. So these are the creatures which keep my world alive and one has to make that connection. It is often just this astonishing abundance expressed in nature. And when I think of abundance, I do not think simply of quantity and numbers. I think of the 
enormous generosity expressed of the forces and spirit which flow through all that lives. As we drop down, it was quite evident that this morning's dive was going to be another muck dive, but I'm really starting to enjoy these dives. It's something completely different, and you start finding a lot of different life. We found some really nice nudibranchs again. And right on the bottom, we found some really big pencil stars, or feather stars, as some people know them. And you can see the tunnels or the tubes that they retract themselves into when they feel threatened. Found a nice big blenny just underneath these guys, but one of the better finds today was a small school of cuttlefish. This is the first time that I've seen so many of these animals together, and there are about six or seven of them, and it was quite nice just to observe them almost looking like out of space um, fighter craft of some sort. Blending in extremely well with his surroundings. These guys will hunt obviously in, in a stealth mode and they have two very long tentacles which they will shoot out and on the end of each tentacle they'll have three or four big sucker pads which attaches itself onto their prey and then once it draws it back into the the body the rest of those eight tentacles grab it and it can actually feed off that and it was within a big bunch of nondescript seaweed that this orangey, browny seahorse emerged. Almost a prehistoric looking animal, only having one dorsal fin and no tail or anal fin. And with this find, um, we were quite, quite excited and we definitely got to go back there and hunt for more of these very interesting and strange looking animals. <laughs> 